Aloha, everybody. This is Kathy Bilski, the Quantum Leap Let Light Unite show on UPR and Radio. And this is ha, Friday the 13th, 2019. Wow. I hope your Friday the 13th has been pretty cool. Mine has. How do you like my new drum? I just got it today. Cool. Well, today I thought I would do something really different. And I put together, oh... All the funny stuff that I have and that I could come up with. And that's what I'm going to do to you, for you tonight. Nothing but humor. So um, I couldn't think of a, a nicer way to really lighten the planet than, than you do with humor. And you get people to laugh because it lightens you up. So sit back. Smoke that doobie. Drink that wine or beer or whatever works for you and just enjoy the evening. All right, here we go. So my first one and is I'm going to sing to you the 12 days of Christmas, um, but it's actually called the 12 days of Facebook. And, you know, I apologize for my voice, but it is what it is. And if I could really sing better, I'd probably be doing that right now. All right, let's see. On the 12th day of Christmas, my Facebook gave to me 12 freaks I'm blocking, 11 friends just watching, 10 corny topics, 9 broken friendships, 8 complaining relatives, 7 stalker stalking, 6 party invites, Five drama queens, four game requests, three photo tags, two friends, a poking, and a creep who won't stop inboxing me. Oh, can you tell what this evening's going to be like? All right. Now, this is one of my favorite, really funny stories. And it's called, Only a Man Would Attempt This. All right. Now, I want you to really envision this happening, okay, and what's happening in the story. So a guy who purchased, oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. It, it is called, Only a Man Would Attempt This. And it's a pocket taser stun gun, a great gift for the wife. A guy who purchased his lovely wife a pocket taser for their anniversary submitted this. Last weekend, I saw something at Larry's Pistol and Pawn Shop that sparked my interest. The occasion was our 15th anniversary, and I was looking for a little something extra for my wife, Julie. What I came across was a 100,000-volt pocket purse-sized taser. The effects of the taser were supposed to be short-lived with no long-term adverse effect on your assailant, allowing her ad adequate time to retreat to safety. Really? Way too cool. Long story short, I bought the device and brought it home. I loaded two AAA batteries in the darn thing and pushed the button. Nothing. I was disappointed. I learned, however, that if I pushed the button and pressed it against a metal surface at the same time, I'd get the blue arc of electricity darting back and forth between the prongs. Awesome. Unfortunately, I have yet to explain to Julie what that burn spot is on the face of her microwave. Okay, so I was home alone with this new toy, thinking to myself that it couldn't be all that bad with only two AAA batteries, right? There I sat in my recliner, my cat Gracie looking on intently, trusting little soul. 
while I was reading the directions and thinking that I really needed to try this thing out on a flesh and blood moving target. I must admit, I thought about zapping Gracie for a fraction of a second and thought better of it. She's such a sweet cat. But if I was going to give this thing to my wife to protect her against a mugger, I did want some assurance that it would work as advertised. Am I wrong? So there I sat in a pair of shorts and a tank top with my reading glasses perched delicately on the bridge of my nose, directions in one hand and taser in another. Now the directions said that a one second burst would shock and disorient your assailant. A two second burst was supposed to cause muscle spasms and a major loss of bodily control. A three second burst would purportedly make your assailant flop on the ground like a fish out of water. Any bursts longer than three seconds would be wasting the batteries. All the while, I'm looking at this little device measuring about oh, five inches long, less than three quarters of an inch in circumference. Pretty cute, really, and loaded with two itsy bitsy AAA batteries. Thinking to myself, no possible way. What happened next is almost beyond description, but I'll do my best. I'm sitting there alone, Gracie looking on with her head cocked to one side as if to say, don't do it, dipshit. Reasoning that a one second burst from such a tiny little old thing couldn't hurt all that bad, I decided to give myself a one second burst just for the heck of it. I touched the prongs to my naked thigh, pushed the button in. Holy mother of God, weapons of mass destruction, what the hell? I'm pretty sure Jesse Ventura ran in through the side door, picked me up in the recliner, then body slammed us both on the carpet over and over and over again. I vaguely recall waking up on my side in the fetal position with tears in my eyes, body soaking wet, both nipples on fire, testicles nowhere to be found, with my left arm tucked under my body in the oddest position and tingling in my legs. The cat was making meow sounds I've never heard before clinging to a picture frame hanging above the fireplace, obviously in an attempt to avoid getting slammed by my body, flopping all over the living room. Note, if you ever feel compelled to mug yourself with a taser, one note of caution, there is no such thing as a one second burst when you zap yourself. You will not let go of that thing until it is dislodged from your hand by a violent thrashing about on the floor. A three-second burst would be considered conservative. It hurt like hell. A minute or so later, I can't be sure as time was a relative thing at that point, I collected my wits, what little I had left, sat up and surveyed the landscape. My bent reading glasses were on the mantle of the fireplace. The recliner was upside down and about eight feet or so from where it originally was. <laughs> My triceps, right thigh and both nipples were still twitching. My face felt, felt like it had been shot up with Novocaine and my bottom lip weighed 88 pounds. I had no control over the drooling. Apparently, I pooped on myself, but was too numb to know for sure. And my sense of smell, gone. I saw a faint smoke cloud above my head, which I believe came from my hair. I'm still looking for my nuts, and I'm offering a significant reward for their safe return. P.S. My wife can't stop laughing about my experience, love the gift, and now regularly threatens me with it. 
If you think education is difficult, try being stupid. <laughs> well, I don't know about stupid. Um, one of my sons thought, and you know, he's a jujitsu <clears throat> master, uh, world class champ, but he decided to get, you know, one of these dog collar shock things and he put it on his um, ankle. And then he gave um, the control to one of his jujitsu buddies that he rolls with, right? And he told them if they didn't think he, he was working hard enough, that they could shock him. I, you know, sometimes those bulbs just don't go on very much in my family. And they do take after their father every now and then. Um, but I, I can't say, you know, what can I say? He did win a championship today. And, you know, he <laughs> got his black belt. So I guess it's working. All right. So, you know how people are complaining about songs and they're not um, politically correct? Well, since some have decided that Baby, It's Cold Outside should be banned and pulled from radio playlists for encouraging date rape, we feel that these other holiday songs must also be removed as they're as offensive as well. All right, ready? Number one. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Ooh, that was bad. So, sorry. I'm sure your ears are going, oh! Okay, what's wrong with that? Subject subjecting minors to soft core soft core porn and infidelity christmas song open fire folks dressed up like eskimos cultural appropriation three holly jolly christmas kiss her once for me unwanted advances slavery of women <laughs> Four, White Christmas, racist. It's coming to town. See when you're sleeping, knows when you're awake. Peeping Tom Stalker, pedophilia. Six, most wonderful time of the year. Everyone telling you be of good cheer. Making light of mental illness, forced to hide depression. Seven, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Now, that's about bullying, if I've ever heard listen to a song. Number eight, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Gender-specific gifts, dolls for Janice and Jen, and boots and pistols for Barney and Ben. A twofer, guns and bigotry. Nine, Santa Baby objectifies women and you know blackmail oh you're not ever going to listen to these songs the same again are you okay 10 frosty the snowman sexist why not a snow woman 11 do you hear what i hear Blatant disregard for the hearing impaired. Twelve, Jingle Bell Rock. Giddy up, Jingle Horse. Pick up your feet. Animal abuse. What else? Thirteen, Mistletoe and Holly. Overeating, folks stealing a kiss or two. How did this song ever see the light of day? 14, Winter Wonderland, Parson Brown demanding they get married. Sounds like a forced marriage to me. 15, it's my, this is the best. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. I mean, if you were Polish and growing up when I did, we always heard this song. I mean, it was a Polish song almost. I thought it was Polish. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. Come on, the name says it all. Reckless driving, attempted murder, elder abuse, and disrespect. All right. All right. That's it for the songs. 
oh my god, I'm going to be going through my humor thing and way before the end of the show. Well, we'll see how we can do. All right, so this is one of my other favorite humor things, okay? And this is called Christmas from a mother's point of view. As I wallowed in Christmas music the last couple of weeks, I have pondered the tradition of the Christmas story, and I've come to the conclusion. Mary was shafted. There she is, eight plus months pregnant, having been dragged all over Israel on the back of a fucking donkey. I know that when I was eight months pregnant, I had a hard time riding for two hours in a car to attend my father-in-law's funeral. And men, they just do not understand how often one has to pee when there's a baby sitting on one's bladder, especially when one is being jiggled by travel. Do you think Joseph cheerfully stopped every 15 minutes for a potty break, heaving Mary on and off the donkey with nary a complaint? I mean, he didn't even get the fun of the conception that had to have had an effect on his equanimity during the pregnancy. So they pull into Bethlehem, and Joseph can't even come up with a room at a Motel 6. Mary must have felt as if her damn back was breaking even before she went into labor. Now let's think about that for a little bit, shall we? Mary was a first-time mother. Her labor would have lasted a long, long, long time. I went for 23 hours between my water breaking and the delivery of my eldest child. So I'm guessing Mary was in labor for 12 hours at least with no option for an epidermal. And for you guys that don't know what an epidermal is, it's when, you know, they give you a nice shot and it freezes you from the waist down so you don't feel the labor pains. It's very interesting. Actually, when I had my first one in the hospital, I got that epidermal shot. And you know what happened? I delivered the baby and then I froze. Oh, my God. I was so pissed. But that's another story. All right. But, yeah, I can really um, relate to Mary. So I suppose God have, could have given Mary a short and pain-free labor. After all, she was doing him a pretty damn big favor, being a surrogate mother and all. But were that the case, I'm pretty sure that would have been mentioned in as one of the miracles of the miraculous birth. Besides, this is a male God. He wouldn't have thought of giving Mary a break. You know, it's one of those women things. And speaking of women things... Who helped deliver baby Jesus? There's no mention of any women being around. Did Joseph run for a midwife? And if so, why don't we know about it? We do know that Joseph couldn't assist. For one thing, he didn't know nothing about birth and no babies. Now, Mary was a first-time mother, but Joseph wasn't even a first-time father. Besides, according to the Jewish laws concerning Nita, at the point when labor became really, really painful, Mary was a voletit, a woman giving birth, and unclean. Oh, thanks, guys. Not Joseph nor the innkeeper, nor the shepherds, nor any other Jewish man could touch her. She was on her own. Beyond that, what was Mary using for a bed? We know all about the little Lord Jesus being tucked away in a manger after the fact. 
But what did Mary labor upon? I doubt that the innkeeper kept a birthing stool handy, especially not in the barn. So I'm guessing our poor girl was relegated to a pile of straw in a cow barn full of fodder and cow shit. Do you think Mary suffered in all the in all it all in stoic silence? Now, if Mary was like most women, she likely was cursing the male who got her in that condition and that position, especially since he had it in his power to spare her the entire ordeal. Jesus was born of a woman. That was the whole idea of God made man, wasn't it? And a real woman would have been screaming her head off, cursing Father, Son, and Holy Ghost for good measure. So here we have Mary, who had jogged around the countryside on a donkey, not getting a decent night's sleep for weeks, having labored mightily to bring forth the child with no assistance from a knowledgeable woman, bedded down in a stable, lying on poking, scratchy straw, amongst the oxen and cows and ducks and sheep and all the effluva which comes from livestock. The poor girl just needs some rest. I know that after I gave birth, the last thing I wanted was a parade of visitors. All I wanted was some goddamn sleep. But poor Mary, what happened to her? Why a veritable convention broke out First, there were the animals already in the, bar, in the barn. The cattle are lowing, the poor baby wakes. And then the shepherds arrive with their flocks. You don't think they left them out in the pastures unguarded, do you? Those sheep were the only wealth they had, and they wouldn't just leave them there. It was those damn angels with their trumpets and their harps of gold, bending near to the earth to sing, Hark! Glory to the newborn king. Oh, yeah. The angels did a great fucking job. By the time they were finished singing on high with the mountains, enjoying the joyful strains to come to Bethlehem and see heaven and nature singing and repeating the sounding joy and the song high above the trees with a voice as big as the seas everyone and their brother but no sisters to tend to Mary had been called to traipse through the car cow barn and stare at the baby there is no consideration at all of what Mary needed the wise men show up with gold frankincense and myrrh for Jesus they could have at least brought a pacifier to keep the baby quiet and Mary could really have used a fluffy down comforter or some nice bath salts, although the frankincense would have been useful for covering up the stench of the cow shit. Oh, shit. They even end up referring to Jesus as the son of man when there was no man involved in this whole process, just a godhead and a woman. By the time the little drummer boy arrived, Mary probably grabbed a shepherd's crook and beat the kid with it and then broke the fucking drum and wailed shit on the shepherds, the wise men, the angels, the sheep, and Joseph for good measure. It would have been the only way she could get a silent fucking night. Oh my God, I hope you're laughing. All right, now this one, um, you thought I would get away without doing anything Trump. Now, I'm not saying this is from Trump or about Trump, but you figure it out. Okay, this was overheard at the customer service counter. Good morning, ma'am. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to return this president, please. What seems to be wrong with it? It's defective. How so? Well, first of all, see the way its head is attached? 
I think it's missing a few screws. Where? Right here. No, they're all here. They're just loose. That could be fixed. Anything else? Yeah. Ever since I got it, it hasn't worked the way I'd like it to. When I turn this switch on like this, it, ouch, grabs me. See that? If any of my woman friends are around, it grabs them too. I think I might be able to fix that. Here, let me see what I can do. Yes, I think it'll be okay if this bolt is adjusted. Hmm, what's the matter? Well, that's odd. It doesn't seem to want to move to the left. It only turns to the right. And there's something else too. It, well, it's almost as if it had a mind of its own. You see, I keep a clean house, but right after I, I brought this president home, it started to dig into my beautiful carpet, destroying it actually. I had to watch it every minute because I knew if I turned my back, there'd be nothing but oily messes all over the house. And those are so ugly and hard to get out, you know? I remember hearing the same complaint about an older model of the same president about 10 years ago. Why did you buy this one in the first place? I didn't. I had my mind made up on another president, one made by another company, but someone else bought this one for me. It's an American product, but it came from a plant in Russia. I thought it was kind of cute at first, you know, with its little hands and that orange stuff on its head. But I knew there was something wrong with it from day one. What made you think so? Well, the instructions on the box listed all the things it should do. But it doesn't do much of anything except make a mess of things or just lie around. I think there's something seriously wrong with its internal workings. There, this other weird thing too, it babbles all the time. It doesn't say anything intelligible or sensible, but every morning about 3 a.m. it goes tweet, tweet, tweet. I realize now that it's not the right president for what I need it to do. So I want to return it and get the one I originally wanted. I'm sorry to tell you this, ma'am, but there's a no return policy on this particular president. I can't return it, but it's practically brand new. It's hardly been used. I want to send it back before it does any more damage. I understand, but we can't do it. Too bad you weren't able to get the president you chose in the first place. That company makes very good ones. In fact, the last model was one of the best ever. They'll be hard to pray press to make another of its kind again. Even when people abused it, and sometimes they were downright brutal to it, kicking it, throwing it on the floor, stomping on it, it still kept right on working and doing what it was designed to do. Can I trade this one in for the last model? No, I'm sorry, but your president is non-exchangeable. Besides, the last model had been retired. Don't be too discouraged, though. The companies will eventually bring out other models. Their new ones will be available in 2020. Four years. I have to wait four years. Do you have any suggestions what I can do in the meantime? Well, you can write a letter to the manufacturers. If enough of their customers are dissatisfied, they might just recall it. Impeach. Right now, though, there's really nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry, I can't help. Oh, that's okay. Thanks anyway. My fault in accepting it at all and waiting to see if it was any good. So I guess I'm stuck with it, huh? I'm afraid so, ma'am. I'm very much afraid so. And then it was recalled. Wasn't that a nice, happy story? Yes. All right, let's travel back in history. Okay? Now, if you're 
30 or older, you may, might think this is hilarious. Now, when I was a kid, adults used to bore me to tears with their tedious diatribes about how hard things were, how when they were growing up, what they what with walking 25 miles to school every day. I only had to walk two. Um, uphill, barefoot, both ways, yada, yada, yada. And I remember promising myself that when I grew up, there's no way in hell I was going to lay a bunch of crap like that on my kids about how hard I had it and how easy they've got it. But now that I'm over the ripe age of 30, I can't help but look around and notice the youth today, and you've got it easy. I mean, compared to my childhood, you live in a damn utopia. I hate to say it, but you kids today, you don't know how good you have it. I mean, when I was a kid, we didn't have internet. And if we wanted to know something, we had to go to the damn library, look it up ourselves in the card catalog, and we had to learn about the card catalog. There was no email. We had to actually write somebody letter with a pen in cursive. And if you don't know what cursive is, that's the loopy writing, which you really should learn it and have your kids learn it. Because if you don't, they are actually losing a language. All right. Well, so you got the letter that you wrote with a pen. Then you had to walk all the way down the street and put it in the mailbox. And it would take like a week to get there. Oh, my God. And back then, stamps were 10 cents. Child Protective Services didn't care if our parents beat us. As a matter of fact, the parents of all my friends also had permission to kick our ass Nowhere we're safe. It takes a neighborhood to watch you, right? Our neighborhood watched us. There were no MP3s or Napsters or iTunes. If you wanted to steal music, you had to hitchhike to the record store and shoplift it yourself. Or you had to wait around all day to tape it off the radio. And the DJ would usually talk over the beginning and fuck it all up. There were no CD players. We all had tape decks back in our car. We'd play our favorite tape. Have to take 20 minutes to rewind or fast forward it to where we wanted it and eject it when finished. And then the tape would come undone, rendering it useless. Because, hey, that's how we rolled, baby. We didn't have fancy crap like call waiting. And if you were on the phone and somebody else called, they got a busy signal. There weren't any freaking cell phones either. If you left the house, you just didn't make a call or receive one. Unless you went to the, oh my God, phone booth. You actually had to be out of touch with your friends. Oh my God. Think of the horror not being in touch with someone 24-7. And then there's texting. Yeah, right, please. You kids have no idea how annoying you are. And we didn't have fancy caller IDs either. When the phone rang, you had no idea who it was. It could be your school, your parents, your boss, your bookie, your drug dealer, the collection agents, your friend. You just didn't know. You had to pick it up and take your chances. We didn't have any fancy PlayStations or Xbox video games with high resolution 3D graphics. We had the Atari 2600 with games like Space Invader and Asteroids. Your screen guy was a little square. You actually had to use your imagination. There were no multiple levels or screens. It was one screen forever, and you could never win. The game just kept getting harder and harder and faster and faster until you died, just like life. You had to use a little book called 
the TV guide to find out what was on. You were screwed when it came to channel surfing. You had to get off your ass and walk over to the TV to change the channel. No remotes. Oh, my God. What's the world coming to? There was no Cartoon Network either. You could only get cartoons on Saturday morning. Do you hear what I'm saying? We had to wait all week for cartoons, you spoiled little rats. And when I was growing up, I know, TV was actually in black and white. There was something called the Mickey Mouse Club. That was black and white. And when my dad got color TV, oh my God, it was incredible. And we didn't have microwaves. If we wanted to heat something up, we had to use a stove in the oven. Oh my God, imagine that. And our parents told us to stay outside and play all day long. Oh, no electronics to soothe and comfort. And if you can't came back inside, you were doing chores in car seats. Oh, please. Mom threw you in the back seat and you hung on. And if you were lucky, you got the safety arm across the chest at the last moment if she had to stop suddenly. And if your head hit the dashboard, well, that was your fault for calling shotgun in the first place. When kids come into my store, I can't say, have a Kodak moment, because they go, huh? So I have to say, have a selfie moment, and they get me. And how many of you, when you were growing up, had the swing set right over cement or tar? You know, the, the tar cement. It's a little bit softer than cement, but it was still. And that tar would bubble up during the summer and create little bubbles that we would pop. But, oh, yeah, we had the swing set and the monkey bars right on the cement. Awesome. Our slides, they weren't this plastic stuff. They were made out of metal. We were tough. And if we didn't want to get burned going down, we would take a piece of cardboard or better yet, you get wax paper um, and fly down that and you just fly down the slide and it was totally cool. Our swings were made out of chains that didn't have plastic over it. And yeah, we got our fingers pinched. We're tough. We could do that. How many of you got flipped off the seesaw when you were growing up? I mean, if you didn't get flipped, you weren't living, right? So, yeah, kids today really, really have it easy, and they're really spoiled. You know, I wonder how many would have lasted five minutes in the 70s or 80s or even before that without all this stuff. But... uh those are the times. So now I'm going to ad lib a little bit and tell you about my new project that I'm doing. And I am communicating with people in prison on their pen pal. It's really, really interesting because some of these people have been in prison for a long, long time. And their ling language is very interesting. Um, so you have to really be open-minded when you write them. And one of the women said she really would like um, a few more pen pals. So I went on Facebook and, and I just put a very general, there's a really lovely lady in prison that would like pen pal. And if anybody would like to write her, then message me. Well, this nice man from Africa said he would. And he wrote to her and kind of mentioned that, you know, I, um, put it out there on Facebook and, and she writes me back and she said, you know, Emmanuel said that you outed me and on Facebook. And I'm thinking outed, I wouldn't say I outed you, but you know, I understand. And then the next thing she says, and by the way, what's Facebook? 
So <laughs> can imagine if you're in the prison and you don't, you know, you, they do get something called JPay, And oh my God, what a racket that is. And this is electronic. So if you want to write them a letter, um, a stamp will cost you 40 cents. Okay. So for every page, it's 40 cents. So if you write them a letter and you add a picture to it, that's 80 cents. If you want them to write you back, because not a lot of these people have money for stamps, um, that's another 40 cents. So what is three different? That's a dollar 20. Okay. Um, so I've learned a lot that I also, if I want them to have information about light work and that, I will send them a hard copy through the mail when it's like four and five pages and I just stuff it. But they've got interesting things that you can and can't do in prison. And one of them is you can't send any information through an envelope with a little tiny clasp on it. They will send that back. Learn by doing. Um, but it's very interesting because I'm communicating with people and their only outlet is normal religion, you know, born agains, evangelicals, Catholicism. So here I come with a spiritual attitude and going, all right, let's work with energy. Let's work with the violet flame. And they're excited because it's giving them something new, but not only I'm giving them knowledge and information, but they're also putting it to work and they're working with it. And I've had a couple women, I'm so thrilled, have said they would do the work with the, the violet flame and do cleansing and call down light in certain areas. And then they would go to people and go, have you noticed anything different? And people will remark, well, I feel lighter and it feels better in here. So it's wonderful confirmation to them. And I keep thinking, God, you can't get better results when it's you know some of the darkest places that you can be in when you work with energy you're gonna see some awesome results so who knows how and the far that will go um but right now i think i have seven pen pals now there's different i will share with you because i also pen pal to a couple immigrants and boy does the government screw them i mean it's it's awful whereas with a regular inmate, you'll get something called JPay, and you know you can get stamps and all that. Now, if you're a locked-up immigrant, there's no JPay, there's no electronic means of contacting anybody, and you're not allowed to send them stamps because they say they're used as um, as money and currency. And I'm like, my God, you know. These people can't even write letters. You can't, it's just awful. Anyway, so for my, uh, you know, when you were giving, gift giving, I think we had Tuesday gift giving. I don't know. It's so crazy now. Every day of the week around Christmas is something, whether it's little businesses. And by the way, shop little businesses. We really appreciate it. Okay. It makes a difference in our lives. And if you want us to stick around, Go into our store and buy, and it doesn't matter what you buy, how much you spend. Just come in and get something. You know, it all adds up in the long run, and we're so appreciative. And you want us to be around because we have cool things for you to buy. So, wow, where was I? Brain bubble. Better be careful. I'm going to start playing music to fill the time. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anybody out there, if you have a pan steel drum, 21 inch, that you would love to trade for rocks and healing stones and crystals, please contact me either on Facebook or through the radio station or my YouTube channel or my website, and let me know if we can make a deal of some kind. I really want a pan drum. Um, they are, they are ethereal when you listen to them. They are the coolest drums, and it takes you out into another place, and they're very peaceful. Anyway, 
Um, so you can contact me, Kathy Bilski, on my Facebook page or www.angellightom.com. It's my website, A N G E L I T E O M dot com. Or you can call me up at my store at 808 775 9400 between. 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. and that's Hawaiian time. So it would be, let's see, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. It would be 4 o'clock from 4 o'clock Eastern time to 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Anyway, sometimes I stay late. I always say, don't come early, don't come late, and you will catch me. But if I am not here, I do happen to have an answering machine, so I will call you back. And I really want a pan drum. <laughs> so if you guys want any extra healing, then contact me at my store at 808-775-9400. And I either do it over the phone, I can do it by Skype, or, oh my God, if you're around, you can come into my store and get that really personal touch. You need curse removal, soul retrievals, I'm the one-stop spiritual shop. Angel-like healing tools. Everyone should have one of those in their house for healing. Um, I know real quick, um, I think it was last week when I was doing some energy work, cutting Satan off from its energy on the planet, and I was pulling in my Earth Keeper crystal, which is like 650 pounds, maybe a little bit over that, and I actually ran over my toes. Oh, my God. I think they heard me yell all the way down the street. <clears throat> Why I didn't crush them, I don't know. I'm going to take that as grace. It hurt like hell. So I quickly put my my foot on an angelite healing plate, and that calmed the trauma down to where I actually could kind of hobble around a little bit. And then when I got back home, I took two flat slices of angelite and I shoved it between my toes um, you know one under the bottom one under the top and I had a sock over it to keep them over that and I didn't bruise at all I mean it's just amazing and I was able to take the dog for a walk the next day so angelite's an incredible stone incredible healing um, I have massage tools and, and angelite plates that you can lay on and they glow in the dark I make cool tools. Yeah. So if you want to keep anchoring light this Christmas, just keep chanting, may divine enlightenment descend on everyone now, may divine enlightenment awaken within every one now. <clears throat> you can do that for your friends, your relatives, acquaintance, people, places, Places that need more light. Now, the more we do it, especially this time around Christmas, the more light we're going to pull on the planet. And we really need it right now because we've got those Nazis <clears throat> really going out there and trying to do their best to take over the planet. Cancel clear, cancel clear, cancel clear. Remember, it's not their destiny. Now, it's our destiny, people of light, to have a planet of peace and prosperity for the next 10,000 years. I mean, I'm in for that. So just because it's a holiday, don't stop doing the work, okay? It's really important. And, you know, tune in, um, subscribe to the YouTube page, Kathy Bilski and UPRN Radio, both of us. You know, if you're on UPRN Radio, you get visual. On my channel, you get audio, but it's still cool. Um, and again, if you want energy work done, call me. You know, don't wait. And on that high note, I really hope you guys have a really, really lovely Christmas. I won't be back till after Christmas. You know, I've got family coming in town, and sometimes you got to put everything aside and give what's really important, and those that you love, attention and quality time. 
and know that God will make up the money, which he always has for me. So have a very peaceful, safe holiday. You know, keep your sense of humor. Bring, keep anchoring the light. And this is Kathy Bilski, the Quantum Leap Let Light Unite show on UPR and radio. And I hope to see you in a couple weeks. And on that note, we're going to say good night. Aloha and uh, Merry Christmas.